And I was, of course, happy to meet the Hezbollah people uh, because it's a point of view that's rarely heard in the United States. And I have no problem saying that I do want to express solidarity with them. And I'm not going to be a coward and a hypocrite about it. I don't care about Hezbollah as a political organization. I don't know much about their politics. And anyhow, it's irrelevant. I don't live in Lebanon. It, it's, it, it's a choice that the Lebanese have to make who they want to be their leaders, who they want to represent them. But there is a fundamental principle. People have the right to defend their country from foreign occupiers. And people have the right to defend their country from invaders who are destroying their country. And that, to me, is a very basic, elementary, and uncomplicated question. My parents went through World War II. Now, Stalin's regime was not exactly a bed of roses. It was a ruthless and it was a brutal regime, and many people perished. But who didn't support the Soviet Union when they defeated the Nazis? Who didn't uh, support the Red Army? And all the countries of Europe, which were occupied, who gets all the honors? The resistance, the communist resistance, it was brutal. It was ruthless. The communists were not, you know, it wasn't the hey, better brothers. But, but you respect them. You respect them because they resisted the foreign occupiers of their country. And if I'm going to honor the communists during World War II, even though I probably would not have done very well under their regimes, if I'm going to honor them, I'm going to honor the Hezbollah. They show <laughs> courage. <laughs> they show discipline. I respect that. هذا التوصيف صحيح ولكن قبل سنة الألفين بعد الألفين صار في انسحاب إسرائيلي من منطقة الجنوب صار في انقسام بداخل لبنان بين الأطراف السياسية اللبنانية حول موضوع مستقبل السلاح وموضوع المقاومة يعني هيدا الانقسام الذي حصل أنت هون عم تفوت طرف فيه أنت عم تكون طرف بالنهاية أنت عم تقول أنت عم تجي على لبنان زيارة ولكن ما عم تشوف تداعيات اللي عم بيصير بالنهاية تداعيات حرب تموز على الناس. Listen, if you want to close your eyes and believe it was all over in May 2000, you can do so. You can play that game. But the reality was, and everyone understood it, that the Israeli attitude was we're going to knock out Hezbollah. And they began planning for a new war right after they were forced to leave in 2000. They found their excuse, their pretext, in July 2006. But there's no question among rational people that Israel was never going to elect, let that victory go by, the Hezbollah victory go by. Hey, well, they were determined, yani, they were determined to can, teach can you can ta yeah. can you can ta it could not have been avoided. There is no way that the United States and Israel are going to tolerate any resistance in the Arab world. You want to pretend it can be avoided? You can play that game. But serious people, clear-headed people, knew there was going to be a war sooner or later. You think there's not going to be another war? You think Israel is going to allow that defeat in Ju July 2006? You want to pretend it's Hezbollah that's causing the trouble? No, there will be another war, and the destruction will probably be ten times worse, maybe even more, than July 2006, because Israel is determined with the United States to put the Arabs in their place and to keep them in their place. Now, how can I not respect those who say no to that. You know, during the Spanish Civil War, there was a famous woman, they called her La Pasionaria, Dolores Ibaruri, from the Spanish Republic. And she famously said, it's better to die in your feet than to walk crawling on your knees. I totally agree. I'm not telling you what to do with your lives. I'm not telling you. And if you rather live crawling on your feet, I could respect that. I could respect that. People want to live. How can I deny you that right? But then how can I not respect those who say they rather die on their feet? How can I not respect that? Israel and the United States are attacking 
because they will not allow any military resistance to their control of the region. That's the problem. If Hezbollah laid down its arms and said, we will do whatever the Americans say, you wouldn't have a war, that's true. But you'd also be the slaves of the Americans. I have to respect those who refuse to be slaves. ما في غير طريقة واحدة اللي هي المقاومة no. العسكرية؟ mm. I don't believe there's another way. I wish there were another way. Who wants war? Who wants destruction? Even Hitler didn't want war. He would much prefer to have accomplished his aims peacefully if he could. So I'm not saying I want it, but I honestly don't see another way unless you choose to be their slaves. And many people here have chosen that. I can't really say I can understand it. You want to live. I can't really say I respect it. You know, so many dead, so much destruction, before the bodies are even buried, before the buildings are even rebuilt, the person who's responsible for it all. You can't wait to welcome him. You can't wait to roll out the red carpet. I can't respect that. In that respect, I like the Jews much more. I like their attitude. You know what the Jewish attitude is? Never to forgive, never to forget. And I agree with that. Why roll out the red carpet less than two years after your whole country was destroyed by them? The Secretary of State said it was the birth pangs of the new Middle East. That's the statement of a freak. A human freak would compare the birth of a child with the destruction of a country. And yet there are people here who are so anxious to welcome her. They're trying to figure out what are the Americans thinking. They can't wait for their banquets. How can anyone respect that? I respect the Jews a thousand times more. Never to forgive, never to forget. All the death and all the destruction. And you can't wait to welcome him. Norman. It's disgusting. Who the hell cares if Bush is coming? You should, persona, you should have declared him persona non grata. He's not welcome here. He destroyed your country. He was responsible for the war. You know full well that resolution could have been passed three weeks earlier. He destroys your country, and you can't wait to greet him. You have no self-respect. How can you expect other people to respect Arabs if you show no respect for yourself? If the Lebanese people overwhelmingly vote to let the Americans and Israelis have their way, I guess you have to accept that. I could see that. And I, I, and I couldn't possibly say that they don't have the right to make that choice. Listen, in Nazi-occupied Europe, you have to remember, most of the populations made the choice to live under the Nazis. All of this talk about the French resistance is just a joke. It never happened. This, the French resistance, about 20% of the French population read the resistance newspaper. There were maybe 10% of the French who resisted. The rest said, don't resist, because the Nazis were ruthless. You resist, 400 are killed for each soldier that's killed. That's how the Nazis operated. So the, most of the French said, like you, we want to live. Don't resist. But now I have to ask you, in retrospect, who do we honor? Do we honor those who say, let us live? Let, or do we honor those who said, let's resist? Leaders come last. There will be a leader who comes into power in Israel who is willing to make the concessions after the conditions have been created. Namely, Israel has to suffer a defeat.